Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to have perhaps speak uh, briefly uh, addressing uh, our, our viewing audience, those who are Muslims uh, and who have been uh, writing to me and asking me for guidance. How should Muslims respond to this provocative uh, film, uh, which is so insulting and derogatory to our Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him. Uh, and my, my response is that a Muslim never acts in a haphazard, in a wild manner, uh, simply bursting out and uh, acting uh, violently uh, in, in a manner which looks like dancing to Dajjal's tunes. You, you should not be a people who can be uh, remote controlled. Uh, when they want you to come out on the streets, they do something like this. The manner in which Muslims should respond to these provocative acts which are taking place from the Zionist world is to vent their anger and their rage and their indignation on the governments which control the Muslims around the world, which are all either sitting on the fence or in the Zionist camp. The people of Saudi Arabia, their eyes are opening to the massive betrayal of the Saudi regime. I get many emails from Saudi Arabia and the Saudi people are becoming more and more uh, conscious of the situation. Uh, the manner to respond is to respond against your own governments, putting pressure on your own governments, that your governments will remain more faithful to the truth, rather than to sit on the fence for purposes of economic mm -hmm. prosperity and voting in the United Nations and voting here and there in order to maintain your balance accounts. This is not the way that people should act who have integrity. Um, the way to act to, to bring pressure upon governments is peaceful protests. The peaceful protest bring, brought down Hosni Mubarak. There may have been Zionist uh, uh, organizations at work in Egypt trying to push the protests, certainly. But it is also an element of spontaneous response from the Egyptian people, which we should not forget. In the same way that the Soviet Union was brought down, the Berlin Wall was brought down by people who are protesting peacefully, <coughs> massive protests peacefully, and they were able to do so much. In the same way, you can come out and protest against your own governments and do what the Egyptian people did, do what the Tunisian people did, rather than to vent your anger and your rage on the American embassy, which is not going to get you anywhere and attacking American diplomats, which is shameful and disgraceful, and ought to be condemned. We should not do to others what we do not want them to do to our diplomats and our embassies. No. So, come out and protest against your own governments. Why are you so much concerned about the Syrian government? Calling the Syrian government barbaric. Calling the Syrian government dictatorships. When the Syrian government, for whatever evils it may have done, it has stood up against Israel, has stood up against the Zionists. Or what about your Saudi government? What about your Qatari government? What about the Jordanian government? What about all of these governments? What about the Pakistani government, which for 10 years has opened Pakistan's territory for NATO transmission? transshipment of supplies and ammunition to kill innocent Afghan people. Is this not shameful conduct on the part of the Pakistan government? Should those Pakistani people who permitted this, government officials who permitted this, 
should they not be held to account? So come out on the streets and demonstrate peacefully to show your anger and your rage against your own governments rather than respond to the film by attacking American institutions. No. You are gifted with insight and guidance. I don't know what to go from here. I thank you. It is overwhelming. <laughs> well, I hope and pray that my uh, uh, assessment is correct, uh, Maurice, that we will not have any wars for the next two, three months. I hope and I pray. Uh, but we must prepare ourselves either in December or in the early months of next year uh, that if Romney becomes the president, the American people must know in advance. I hope they listen to me. Romney is going to do what the Zionists want him to do and what Barack Obama has not been prepared to do so far. Romney will lead the charge against Iran against Pakistan, against Syria, and in so doing, he's going to make the distinct possibility of nuclear war become an actuality. If nuclear war takes place, if it's the first time in human history, it will be the first time in human history that two opposing forces have attacked, will have attacked each other with nuclear weapons. Never before in human history. If the war if that war were to take place, the American people must know that America's cities and Canadian cities are all going to be destroyed. What is going to be left of the United States and America after such a war will be devastation. Europe is going to face the same as it because these are nuclear weapons and these are thousands of nuclear weapons. The world which is going to be left after that nuclear war is a world that the Zionists, who of course will survive nuclear war because they have their underground cities already built, the world that's going to be left after that nuclear war will be a world that Israel can rule over more easily than the world that now exists. So when you go and elect Romney as president, you're preparing the way for the nuclear war that will destroy the United States of America and Canada. A good, a, well, I mean, the elections are fixed. If they want Romney in, Romney will be in. That's right. And one final comment, if I may, and that is that this is Islamic scholarship offering this kind of analysis. Islamic scholarship could not offer this kind of analysis if Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, was not indeed a true prophet. And if the Quran was not indeed the true word of the one God. So as we move towards Armageddon, it should become more and more clear to people in the Western world that they, they do need to take another look at the credentials of the man named Muhammad, who says that he is a divinely appointed messenger of the one God, and not some uh, fake, not some false prophet. Take a look once again at the Quran from which has emerged Islamic eschatology. How am I who am I to be saying that Israel wants to rule the world? Who am I to be saying that Pax Britannica came into being and was then succeeded by Pax Americana so that Pax Judaica can conclude the process? Where did I get this knowledge from? And when Israel does become the ruling state in the world tomorrow over a world which has been devastated by nuclear war, that a man will stand up in Israel and declare that he is the Messiah. So there is a religious 
a religious factor explaining all that is happening now. When he stands up in Israel and he declares, I am the Messiah, we from the world of Islam will look at him in the eye and say to him, no, you're the false Messiah. You, the Dajjal. We know you. And then the true Messiah will come back. We from the world of Islam, we have this belief based on the Quran and based upon what the Prophet said, that Jesus will return. And when he returns, he's going to put an end to this false Messiah and he's going to rule the world. This is Islamic eschatology. Truth will now triumph over falsehood and over all rivals. And justice will triumph over all oppression. This is Islamic eschatology. And we would like to commend to our viewing audience that they take a look at uh, the credentials of the Quran and the credentials of the man named Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. My book entitled Jerusalem in the Quran. Can someone hand me a copy, please? My book entitled Jerusalem in the Quran. Uh, I would like to offer as a textbook on Islamic eschatology uh, explaining the subject. Uh, Jerusalem in the Quran. I don't know whether you've seen this book, um, Morris. Are you getting it here? No. You'll lift it up, please. Lift the book up. Yes. Yes, we see it very clearly. Well, send me your mailing address so I can mail you a copy. <laughs> it will be a pleasure. Right. There you are. So we have our instructions. I'd like to thank you for being inspiring. With all the doom and gloom, there is hope. I think Islam is marvelous. Everything I hear about it. I mean, I think I, I should know. I should think a lot of people could say that that maybe are not followers or believers or practicing Islam. I think uh, the the laws are make sense. Well, I'm glad that you responded in this way to my denunciation of those who attacked the American ambassador and killed him. I denounced them in the most powerful language I can possibly denounce as barbaric and that this is a blemish on the fair face of Islam. It has nothing to do with the religion of Islam. We will escort a foreign ambassador, escort him out of our territory if we do not want him, but we will not harm him. No, once you are a foreign ambassador, in our territory, we respect your diplomatic privilege. Well, karma is not an Islamic concept, or is it? But me? Karma? Or oh, karma? Uh, cause karma. and effect. I mean, these karma. very people that took him out are the people he created, so to speak. <laughs> oh, this is a case of the chickens coming home to roost, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, these are John McCain's boys. John McCain's boys. He's the one who stood with them proudly in Benghazi, I believe. He went to Benghazi and he stood with them. These are his boys. So they created the monster and the monster then turned upon them. I don't think the monster turned upon them spontaneously at all. I think this was all pre-planned and the ambassador was lured to Benghazi so that they could attack the embassy with him in the embassy or the consulate. It was all pre-planned so that they could use this to inflame public opinion in the United States and impact upon the presidential elections. Pretty clever people for calculating. Manipulating us all into war after war. Just That's pulling... Right pulling the strings and owning the media. That's right.